We are in the college football offseason, but what offseason? For Tennessee, that certainly seems to be the case. The NCAA investigation into the Vols continues while Tennessee's attorney general uh, was arguing against the NCAA uh, with his fellow lawyers in court this week. Welcome into the Volunteer State. I'm Blake Topmeyer alongside the Knoxville News Sentinels, Adam Sparks and John Adams. Adam was in Greenville, Tennessee this week for the court hearing that will determine whether Tennessee wins a preliminary injunction against the NCAA that is at least tangentially related to the ongoing NCAA investigation of the Vols. We will get to that in the second half of the pod, but let's start with some things occurring a little bit closer to the field, at least for the spring practice field. Adam, you had a news update today and uh, Tennessee spring game. Well, attendance to it is going to be reserved for the rich and famous. Tell us about it. <laughs> At least the rich. I don't know how famous they are, but uh, it's 10,000. That's all they're letting in. Now, keep in mind that Neyland holds over 100,000, but Neyland uh, right now is under construction, has been all off season. Um, for people that that don't understand why why it should make any difference in just one day, there's at least as far as I can understand. I mean, there's a construction schedule as you can imagine. It's not like last year; it was one side of the stadium. Right now, there are elements of the construction that are touching. I think three of the four sides, so to speak. Um, they don't want to shut that down. Um, they would have to honor so, certain code safety codes if they were to put more people into the stands than just, you know, than just one set of a couple sections. So, so they're going to, they can't shut down work just for the spring game. And the thinking there is if they were to shut it down, see, if you think back in January, we had the snowstorm, And so there was no work for like a couple of weeks that got them behind in the renovations. And they're afraid if they shut it down again, just to allow more people to get in for the spring game, they would be they would be risking the chance that they would not be ready for the season opener. And if you weigh that out, what gets fans more angry, missing the spring game or limited capacity for the season opener? Um, you know, it's, it's a pretty easy decision. Also, the you, you would lose revenue, and that's obviously what matters more. So to be the 10,000, approximately 10,000 that gets into the spring game, you're you got to be a high donor rank. Uh, it's 10 bucks to get in regular seats, $15 for premium seating. Uh, so even if you have a high do uh, donor rank, you still got to pay to get in the spring game. Uh, but if you're not those top 10,000, you may not have a chance to buy tickets. There will be recruits there, recruits, families, players, families, all that there too, in addition to the 10,000, but that you got to be in the top 10,000 to get, uh, to get a chance to buy tickets, to get in the spring game. Now, there will be a chance to watch it. Otherwise, uh, it'll be uh, it'll be aired on SEC Network Plus. See if you have, which is if you have, streaming. It's not a channel it's streaming. on the TV. Yeah, it's streaming. I mean, it's a channel on my TV. And for people that are listening, if you know that you can watch that on your TV, then you don't have anything to worry about. If you worry that hey, I don't have that channel, that quote unquote channel on my TV, then you may be in trouble. You may want to talk to your grandkids or something before the. Before, before April in the spring game comes around. But you can watch it. You can also go to campus. They'll have the the big screens there and lot nine and I think Vol Village or something like that. You can sit out there and picnic and watch it. But uh you can still watch you can still watch it on, on SEC Network Plus, which is not a big deal. Just get you a, a ESPN subscription. Um I guess the, the biggest downside of this is this is your chance to see a lot of Nico. Um, you know. And if you, if you think about it, like you saw a little snippets of Nico last season, but the one time you saw a lot of him live is the Citrus Bowl, which meant that was only the people that went down to Orlando at New Year's, which is probably a lot of the same people that could pay or that would be in the high donor rank to get into the spring game. So, so you're still leaving out some of the same people. Uh, but you'll see him in August, I guess. Uh, yeah, it, it's away. interesting. I, I received an email from a, a fan recently that said, you know, it seems like college sports is becoming more and more an offering for the elite, the upper crust, the upper class. And, and this uh, fan asked me, who's looking out for the little guy? 
anymore. <laughs> and I just politely said, uh, no one is yeah. looking out for the little guy. Like, no offense, but little guys don't matter anymore. This is, uh, this is a world for the elites, the rich. And if you're a little guy, uh, like Adam said, you're, you're stuck paying for a, a $10 ESPN plus subscription. I mean, Adam pointed yeah. out some of the construction realities here, but, uh, and I'm not just talking about Tennessee, like this is the reality of college sports anymore. Uh, if you got pennies on the dollar, move aside for, uh, the rich folk next to you because they're, they're, uh, moving into the, the good seats and you're watching on your handheld out in the parking lot. There is a, by the way, there is a place for the quote unquote little guy monetarily to take a big part in college football. It's called FCS. It's one double A or it is lower end one A. And I mean, and I'm serious. I mean, I, I covered Sunbelt Conference and Conference USA for 12, 15 years or whatever. And you can go get season tickets. there, are pretty reasonable prices and you can watch division one football. And that's that, you know, if, if that's not your thing, and I know a lot of Tennessee fans, I'm, I'm not lobbying for UT fans to go find another team, but, uh, you went to you another. Sure if you're, if, if, <laughs> it sounds that way. If you're a Tennessee fan and you went to another school, if you have a degree from another school, that other school actually will let you in uh, very cheaply. Uh, so there is a place for others to go. Um, if you're complaining about how much your tickets are, I completely understand. They're cheaper elsewhere. Uh, but if you're an SEC school, there's a lot of money involved in this. There's NIL money. There's uh, there's buildings to, and and facilities to be built. Um, you got, you, you got to have some money. You can't get in, can't get in cheaply. Sorry. Well, you, you've got to be able to play to pay Nico and sure. you can pay Nico, but then you might not have enough money left to actually watch him play in person. That's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of the lesson we've learned here. I, Adam, you've also covered, uh, you have uh, a lot of experience with the have nots. Mm -hmm. uh, you've also covered Vanderbilt. So I think, isn't the game next season in uh, Vanderbilt Stadium, the Tennessee game? Is well, th now, but that's the problem, John, is Vanderbilt tickets are reasonably pr priced, but the Tennessee game is for Tennessee fans is not reasonably priced because Vanderbilt fans did the calculus on that and they will sell you tickets, uh, you know, <laughs> real 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 high okay. so okay still, so, sorry you're not gonna that didn't work out for you either okay so i'm just trying to figure this out now probably can't you might not can afford to go to a bowl game can't afford to go get season tickets you hopefully you know you can pick one up outside the gate maybe if you're lucky uh can't even go to the spring game now um uh, Hmm. You can go sit in a nice, comfortable seat at ETSU and then watch the Tennessee game on TV. Problem solved. You can be a fan of both. You guys know know, know people that are fans of a lower of ETSU? school or higher school? <laughs> yeah. Tennessee. Sure. sure. <laughs> a weird Venn diagram. <laughs> what? It's, uh, yeah, what about... Uh, what about media seating? Will it will it be limited for the spring game, Adam? Or can we? Can oh, everybody you know, I, have a shot, huh? I ha I haven't asked that yet. Um, last time that question was asked was during COVID, and I I'd forgotten that's actually an option. No, I think I think there's plenty of seats for us up there. I don't I don't think there's any construction. You got to pay for it in the press box. Say again. You got to pay for your seat yet? Uh, not yet, not yet. Okay. Uh, that's I well, think that's coming. Yes. Uh, UCLA was ahead of the curve on that. I can remember in 2008 purchasing food in the UCLA press box. It was a, a kind of watered down po' boy, I think, for about six seventy five. dollars uh, got in that was in the 2008 season. Yeah. A, a watered down po' boy. Yeah. You know, it just had a, a soggy look to it. You, you know what I mean? If you're just the bread, it just didn't seem. It was a long way from crisp, I guess I could say. I was yeah. covering a game back to my Sunbelt days. I was covering a game at Florida Atlantic one year, and uh, the we were told there was to be some sub sandwiches uh, in the at the end of the room. Well, they they didn't have a roof on part of their press box, and uh, so we went down there, and the sandwiches were floating. 
And they said they're in plastic. Just wring them out and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Sunbelt Conference in 2004. Well, cuisine well, aside, John, um, do you is this the type of thing that no one really cares about more than six hours? Uh, I, I mean, you've had your thumb on the pulse of this fan base for 30 years now. Like, uh, people will be worked up, I'm sure, in the short term that folks that want to go to the spring game. And I get it. I mean, as recently as a couple of years ago, you could go to the spring game for free and, uh, you know, have a seat on each side of you uh, if you're sitting in the upper deck, right, and stretch out a little bit. Now, because of construction realities and, and just the direction of the sport, as Adam has said, that the attendance is limited to 10,000 people and, and you just have to deal with it and watch it on streaming. But is this something that you think touches a nerve with, uh, with Vols fans or is it more, uh, Hey, that's inconvenient and life goes on. Um, I think it really touches a nerve and I think it upsets a lot of fans and I'll get some emails about it. But then after a while, it kind of just goes away because it's not as though these people won't watch the Vols on TV. They will still watch the Vols whenever they get the chance. I think it will hurt a little more uh, this time because I think so many fans wanted to say, well, I got to see uh, Nico Yamaleava in his uh, first, in his spring game, not his first, but a spring game. And I think uh, you know, that will get them even more pumped for the season to come. But those things subside. I mean, I hear all the time people will say, you know, I'm almost fed up with college football. It's all about the money now. Yeah, but they still hit that remote and, you know, yeah, rear the, back the in their recliner. And uh, I know, uh, I know Adam's wife, Bev, is probably distraught over the news that she won't be going to spring game. She can have my press pass if she wants it. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> don't don't say that too loudly or she'll she may claim it i i, I think um yeah blake I, I think it depends on fans expectations when they go to a spring game if you go and say it's probably nice weather i'm gonna be if not in the stadium around the stadium it's gonna feel like football i haven't seen football live for a few months and look i'm there's there's football and i'm around it or i'm seeing it, even if i'm seeing it on tv and I don't care what the product looks like. I'm not looking for a certain player. I don't care if they play well or not. If you come with that expectation, which I do know some people that do that, I just want to feel like it's football, then then you're you're usually going to be satisfied with the spring game, um, either watching it on TV or, or live. But if you go with expectations of seeing a certain player a lot, especially, you know, I want to see Nico throw a lot. Well, you're not. He's not going to play much. Um, I want to see these starters. How come the starters were out of the game within 15 minutes? Because coaches don't want to get them hurt. Um, if you go, you know, with with that expectation, you're probably going to be disappointed. You wouldn't have been disappointed 20 years ago in the spring game. You would be now because it, it doesn't matter to coaches that much. It it doesn't matter as uh, to the administration as much as obviously anything in the regular season. Um, it just it's it's you know it's a picnic that's what it is it's just a day to come out and say hey it's football again but if you're going to get some kind of substance you're probably going to be disappointed so it's all about perspective when you go well and uh the overarching question here is uh will tennessee still be battling off the field with the ncaa come the spring game uh, both inside and outside the courtroom uh, adam had the coverage uh of that court hearing this week we're waiting on the judges ruling on whether Tennessee is going to win a preliminary injunction against the NCA. That's Tennessee, the state, not the university, although it's easy to get those confused. They kind of go hand in hand here. And, it, and it's really a two pronged effort. Um, this, the attorneys general of, of Tennessee and Virginia uh, in the short term hope to win a preliminary injunction against the NCAA, uh, which would freeze the NCAA's NIL guidelines. Uh, if even if they don't get the preliminary injunction, they can still uh, attempt to win the overarching case. So it's really two bites at the apple uh, for the attorneys general here, and it leaves the NCAA trying to swat them away time and time again. Uh, Adam, I want to come to you in a moment for kind of the inside the courtroom take, but John, I want to start with you because um, you're sort of following this from a scoreboard 
sense. Uh, you're not <laughs> you're, you're not down in the trenches covering the <laughs> hearings like Adam is. You're 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 looking at what the score is and who's going to win this game. And uh, so as we sit here at uh, let's call it uh, about the first intermission, we've we've had the temporary restraining order come and go. Tennessee didn't win that. Now they're going for the preliminary injunction. They're ultimately going for the victory in the case. Where do you see the score here at the first intermission of this this case? Well, actually, I'm looking at this. I'm not keeping score. Oh, you're not keeping score. Okay. No, I'm not keeping score, but I, I just don't think any of this matters. I just think ultimately uh, uh, it will be resolved in court in favor of Tennessee and against the NCA because it's illegal what the NCA is uh, perpetrating right now. I kind of wish – I was a little surprised when we got a delay. I thought – we might get a ruling. I was a little surprised at the delay, and maybe that's uh, maybe that's good for Tennessee. I would like to see the judge just say, look, we know how this is going to end up in court. Why don't we just save everybody money, time, worry, and just go ahead and say, you can't do this, and, and it's over with. But Well, the judge needs a paycheck too, John. Is he just going to wrap well, up his work week? You I got think to draw both, this out, collect, collect the check. Well, I know that's, uh, that's naive of me. Uh, I think both attorneys would, ar- would argue s- strongly against that. <laughs> Even Dennis. Rack up the billable hours. <laughs> sure. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. So I just, I, I don't know. I just think fans will, uh, get exasperated by it, but, uh, it goes on. I just don't, I just don't see how it could end any differently than than the court saying no the, to the NCA. You can't do this. So, all right, let's go to our our uh, expert here. Adam has brushed up on the law the last few weeks. He knows the ins and outs of antitrust, uh, and and he's uh, read through every every bit of material on this case. He was uh, there for the hearing on Tuesday in Greenville. Adam, take us inside the courtroom, sort of summarize the arguments uh, from the state of Tennessee's perspective versus the arguments you heard from the NCA's perspective in this law- antitrust lawsuit. Yeah, so th- for the injunction to happen, which is just that stops NIL rules immediately, uh, in theory. Um, that's what Tennessee wants. That's what UT wants for the injunction to be granted. Um, they've got to show irreparable harm. In other words, they've got to they've got to make they've got to convince the judge that there's there's an immediate harm. This is an emergency. You've got to stop nil rules like right now. Um, they tried to make that case in the restraining order. Uh, the judge said no. This is not enough an emergency. Some recruits could lose money, but they could recoup that later uh, potentially. You've got to show me more than just uh, monetary reasons. To, to enact this this emergency order. Uh, the states came back with um, really two arguments. One I think was decent, the other one was much better. The the decent one, the sort of the, the weaker of the two, I think is that it hurts UT's perception um, that there's a, a negative stain on UT football, UT athletics right now because they're under an NCAA investigation in in our NIL rule. There may be some truth to that. I don't know. I mean, they this is the fifth straight year, fourth straight off season. They've been under an NCAA investigation, so this has actually been the norm, you know, for a while. Um, but you know, that's a decent case that it hurts their perception. But the the counter for the NCAA, I think, is pretty easy, which they 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 kind of went with this is that they said we don't know anything about any 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 allegations. Uh, the NCAA attorney said I can't confirm deny any of that. I don't I don't I don't know what you're talking about. Because there's no notice of allegations. So right now it's just it's media reports that there's an investigation. It's been acknowledged, obviously, by UT. It's been uh, referenced a little bit by the NCAA. But until there's allegations and until it's on paper that those are over NIL, the NCAA can deny that anything's going on. So they if they say if there's negative perception around UT. That's not our fault. We didn't you know, this is just uh, it's just people, uh, you know, bantering back and forth. So I thought that was the weaker of the two arguments. The better argument for, to stop NIL rules as an emergency, like right now, was about recruits' leverage. Um, the idea is that 
they have, if you can bid for your NIL value, if you can go to Tennessee and say, I want this much as a recruit, a high school recruit or transfer, and then go over to LSU and say, Tennessee's going to give me 50 grand. Can you give me 75? And then LSU says, yeah, we'll give you 75. Then you can go to Georgia and say, will you give me a hundred? And then you go back to UT and say, hey, Georgia, give me a hundred. Can you give me 125? You can do a bidding war in that way. If you're a good enough player, you have that leverage. The the argument of the states, the state attorney, the state attorney general, is that that recruit will never, ever be able to regain that leverage, recoup that leverage. I think that's a pretty good argument. You have the most leverage as a really good recruit than you will ever have again. If you're, let's say you're the top end recruit, you're a five star recruit. You can go to any school in the country and drive your price up. Um, but if you don't know what those prices are between the schools, because you're not allowed to negotiate, you, you really will never get the market uh, all the way up to what your value could have been. And then if you choose a school, in theory, you're not supposed to negotiate until under the rules, until you enroll at a school, then you enroll at that school. If you don't pan out as a player or you blow out your knee or something, you'll never get that leverage back that you had as that five-star recruit who had not yet signed a letter of intent. So the 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 argument is you need to let these guys be able to receive bids openly right now, this class, this 2025 class, these transfers, all that. I thought that was a pretty good argument. I don't know that it will go through with the injunction or not. I think that's a little bit of a coin flip. Uh, but Tennessee, the state – is eventually going to win this case, like John said. I think what UT fans care more about is like, is that going to happen and when is that going to happen? If the injunction is granted, the investigation into UT probably ends because NCAA can't enforce rules that are illegal. It would make it really difficult to do that. But if it's denied, if the injunction is denied, this case may very well go forward, and that could be several months. So what you're looking at is if the injunction is granted, UT can probably say, okay, we're done with this, like that day, that week. If the injunction is denied, you're probably going to be fine in the long run, but you could easily, you would probably go into spring practice not knowing. You could even go into the summer or, or fall camp not knowing if you're done with the NCAA. And I think that the threat of that dark cloud, I think, is what would bother UT fans more than anything. John, you had a, a column this week in, in which you said that you don't really see uh, why this NCAA investigation or the ongoing lawsuit would really be a blow to Tennessee or its recruiting efforts. And so I'm wondering for each of you, um, you know, what, your perception is of the concern from the program about the the investigation and lawsuit let's just lump them all together the quote unquote situation what is or what should be the level of concern for Josh Heupel for the program itself about all this stuff going on i mean i don't i don't get the sense that uh, it's like five alarm fire that there's a there's a bunch of panic going on over in, in Josh Heupel's world. But, uh, you know, John, you kind of intimated that there really doesn't need to be much panic going on over there. So I'm, I'm just curious in your guys' kind of perceptions of what the mood should be, you know, in and around the football facility. Well, when yeah, I look at it like we're in such a different era. We've never been in this kind of era. And it used to be there was always such a stigma about being under an NCAA dark cloud, if you will, uh, because you did you knew it could just hover over your head for months and months and years, even like the Jeremy Pruitt investigation did. It, it's just, and it was used to negative recruiting all the time. And you know how competitive it is in the SEC. So everybody said, well, you don't know, you might never play in a bowl game there. Who knows what's going to happen to them? You might not have a, a great supporting cast if you're a star quarterback, because they may have scholarship uh, restrictions. But see, now I look at it completely different. I look at it, everything through an NIL lens or through a dollar sign. It, it's it's about the money, and it's almost as though Tennessee is getting free advertising. <laughs> we pay a lot of money to our student athletes, okay? And we support our student athletes. Don Plowman, the chancellor, said that. 
Uh, Danny White, the AD, said that we stand by our student athletes. So all all the way this... up to your public officials uh, in Nashville, the, yeah. the governor and and your attorney yes. general, John, Jonathan Scrimetti. Well, so you have as a you're coming in here as a first time player, and you have this whole army of support. Not to mention a pretty good idea that uh, Tennessee isn't cheap when it comes to taking care of their players. To me, it's just like a a giant billboard. Uh, you might as well have a big billboard of uh, Nico. That might be illegal in the old days, but it shouldn't be now. Uh, a big with with Nico just throwing out money. You know how you could have him kind of his arm stretched out from the billboard uh -huh. with dollars falling out of it. I think that would be a nice touch. Yeah, I I, I agree with everything that John said. Um, that I think this you could work this into being a positive. I don't really see recruiting being hurt or anything right now because of, of what's going on. Um, I, I did think it was funny that, uh, so in the hearing on Tuesday, the, uh, the uh, state attorney general's uh, lieutenants there, his lawyers that were speaking made the case that recruiting could be, could be harmed terribly if this continues <laughs> to go on. And then I stepped out of the hearing and I got a news alert from Knox News. <laughs> John Adams says recruiting will not be hurt. <laughs> Your column may be in discovery as we move forward on the NCAA side. Um, but I, I, I don't I don't see anything. I don't see uh, recruiting being harmed or anything like that. Uh, you know, it's it's sort of a hard thing to it's, it's not really tangible. It's hard to prove one way or the other. I will say there's there could be a chance depending on the opposing coach that's recruiting against Tennessee, depends on how savvy that coach is and how uninformed the recruit is. I think there's a chance that it could make a difference. And, and, and this is how. So Dondi Plowman in her letter to the NCAA uh, president referenced that Tennessee, there's a possibility that, that the NCAA is going after them for like a postseason ban, a lack of institutional control. Um, she's confident they'll beat that, but she did reference that the NCAA is looking at that possibility. And then in the hearing in a federal courthouse on Tuesday, the attorney representing the uh, the Tennessee Attorney General said in his argument, there's the threat against Tennessee of a postseason ban and of quote players having to sit out games. Now he followed that up with it's very doubtful, quote unquote, very doubtful that the NCAA will be even be able to punish Tennessee. But the threat of that is absolutely real and out there. So if I'm a if if I'm an assistant coach at a you know a school trying to steal a recruit away from Tennessee, I take that first statement and I forget the second one. And I put that in front of an uninformed recruit, and I say, "Look, a fed in a federal courthouse, somebody representing the state of Tennessee said this is real and this could happen." And forget the fact that after that he said it's very doubtful that it would happen. I think he, I think you could use that if you needed to. And uh, you know, if it's coin flip between Tennessee and another school, um, that's going to happen. That's going to come up if if there's any possibility you could scare a kid into saying you're not going to get to play in a bowl there. Um, then that could work. I will say, and if any of those recruits are listening, it ain't going to happen. Uh, Tennessee is not going to get a postseason ban. Um, Nico is not going to get suspended. Could those allegations come to light? And could the NCAA seek that officially? Absolutely, they could, depending on how where this hearing goes, where the injunction hearing and all that goes. They absolutely could do that. If they do that, they're going to get sued by Tennessee and they're going to, or they're going to get sued by Spire Sports, the collective. And this, this thing is going to get solved in court in another way. I mean, you know, I, I think I've reported since our last pod about uh, Tennessee's, the, the news we had of Tennessee hiring William Burke back in, he was hired December, but we got the, the documents this a uh, few days ago. Um, that's the attorney that UT has hired, not state of Tennessee that UT has hired to combat the NCAA investigation. William Burke is a, he worked uh, for Steve Bannon and some others in the Trump administration during the Robert Mueller case, the, that the Robert Mueller probe into, uh, uh, into uh, Donald Trump. He 
he worked for Robert Kraft on his on on the uh, the criminal trial that he had. Um, he represented FIFA, the soccer federation. He was a prosecutor that sent uh, Martha Stewart to prison. He uh, was general counsel for George W. Bush in the White House. Um, he he worked under two Supreme Court justices. Um, in Tennessee, he, he, excuse me, the NCA is countering with some lawyer who went to UT, right? That's, that's right. The, uh, the yeah, two of their two of their four attorneys at the hearing. Uh, or UT law yeah. alums. I thought that was, yeah. that was let's, telling. Let's see how good your law school is, UT. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, there was funny. The NCAA attorney <laughs> who spoke during the hearing worked in the Obama administration. So if you want to go conspiracy theory, one side hired an Obama administrative guy, another guy hired a Bush administrative guy. Um, but uh, I say all that to say this. Look at the distinction between the NCAA investigation that Tennessee has been through. In the Jeremy Pruitt case, they went and hired uh, uh, Mike Glazier, the the best counter to NCAA infractions that money can buy. He he's the best you can get if you're in an NCAA infractions committee hearing, not criminal court, not any other kind of federal court. If you are in the room in a hearing in the NCAA governance, that's the best you can buy. This guy that they hired for this investigation, William Burke, I'll bet has never stepped foot into an NCAA infractions hearing. This guy, this guy practices law in front of the Supreme Court into high profile cases. The, the takeaway is that Tennessee is saying, we have our attorney. He's in Washington, D.C. He'll meet you when you get there. I think that's the message there. We're not going to end this in some NCAA infractions committee. hearing well, all. And so you can see the link between the the federal lawsuit and UT's investigation. It's all about what is or isn't legal. And I think that was a that was a power move to some extent on UT's part predicting or maybe forecasting to the NCAA where they intend for this thing to end. And they're paying the guy $2300 an hour, so I guess you you also get your money's worth in that way. It's like when Cosmo Kramer wanted to bring the lawsuit and Seinfeld. He hired the lawyer that was uh, uh, based off of Johnny Cochran. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he, he got Cosmo some good deals, although Kramer kept screwing it up. I don't I don't know that Tennessee's going to. It was it was it was coffee in his lap, wasn't it? Wasn't that it? Yeah, yeah there was a there's one with the coffee. Yeah. And there a couple other things maybe that he, he went went running to him for. So, uh, yeah, you mentioned something in the negative recruiting, Adam, that struck me as, um, you know, coaches can try to recruit against um, Tennessee by saying, well, you go there, you might not play in a bowl game. I think in uh, the, the year 2024, uh, if most recruits are coming back with, okay, big deal. How much am I going to get paid? <laughs> bowl game, what's that? What's, yeah, yeah, uh, what's, yeah, what's yeah, a let, paycheck say? <laughs> yeah, let me, let me amend that. Uh, uh, forget the bowl game. You won't get a chance to play in the college football playoff if they make it. That's, that's, yeah, but how much are they getting paid? <laughs> <laughs> Again, that depends on which year you're asking and how much that revenue is, is shared, right? All right. Well, what I've learned today is if you want to know about Tennessee football's spring game, read Adam's coverage at knoxnews.com because you probably won't be in attendance. If you want to know what's going on with the NCAA case, with the lawsuit, read Adam's coverage over at knoxnews.com. Uh, and all three of us will be back with you very, very soon to discuss some more on another edition. Thanks for listening to The Volunteer State.